Hello and welcome to our channel, Tech Expert Tutorials. Looking for a way to schedule SSIS packages to run automatically? This video demonstrates how to use SQL Server Agent within SSMS to create a scheduled job to run your SSIS package. We'll walk you through the process, making it simple and easy to automate either data workflows or pipelines. See our previous video on how to run an ETL pipeline within an SSIS package. The pipeline we are working with uses an FTP task to get an external file and then store it locally. Then it creates a new SQL server table and loads the data from the file into that table using an execute SQL task component. Okay, let's get started. First, open the SSIS integration service project that you want to run. If you don't have a project yet, see our previous video on how to create an integration service project in SSIS, link in the description below. Right click on the project name in the upper right corner and select deploy from the drop down menu. A wizard form will appear explaining the deployment process. After reading this, click next. If you don't have an integration services catalog in your target database already, go to your SQL server in SSMS, right click on catalogs and select create catalog. Fill out the form, select the CLR integration if it is not already selected. The default name for the catalog database will be SSISDB. Create a password and then click OK. Verify the catalog was created by expanding the catalog's item. We can see SSISDB here. Right click to view properties. You should see something similar to this screen. Go back to SSIS and select deploy again. Click next. We are setting this up on our on-premise SQL server. There are also options here to use Azure-based solutions. Click Next. You can type in the server name and instance, or see if this is an option under Browse. Be sure to select Windows Authentication if available. We set our Windows account up as an admin in our previous video on installing SQL Server on our desktop. See that video for more details. For path, click on Browse and select the SSISDB we just set up earlier. We need to create a folder here to store the information for our job. We name our folder SSIS test, then click OK and OK again. The path should look like this. Click Next. Here we can review our changes, then click on Deploy. Check the results from our deployment. Everything should have a green check mark. You can save the report here, or if you have errors, this report will help you troubleshoot them. Click Close. Okay, now go back to SSMS and open the catalogs and the folders underneath. Drill down to the DTSX file we just deployed and test the job by right-clicking and selecting Execute. A form will pop up showing any parameters that you can select. In our case, we don't have any. Click on OK. When the package starts running, another form pops up to get details on the execution. Click on Yes. You will see a lot of details on the package execution such as how long something takes, any errors, where it ran, and what account was used, etc. We verified that the package ran by selecting records from the table. We see five records. This means the package ran successfully. We run a truncate statement for testing the job later. To create a job to run this automatically on a fixed schedule, scroll down to the Jobs folder under the SQL Server Agent item and right-click. Select New Job. Here we give the job a meaningful name, load employee table. Owner is our Windows login account. This should be filled out for you already. Click OK and go to steps. Click on new step. Fill out the name. We name ours load table, then change type to SSIS package. This will fill out the run as with SQL server agent service account. We want to use the SSIS catalog we created earlier. Fill out the server name and instance. We want to use Windows Authentication for our demo. To find the package to run, click on the three ellipses. Drill down in the folder and project named Integration Services Project and select our package.dtsx file. Then click OK. Next, click on Schedules. We give the schedule a name. We name ours daily. We want recurring and enabled. Then we select daily for frequency. We can change the time that this runs. We also select this to run every day. We'll keep this running once per day, then click OK. You can also select alerts and notifications, but you may want to set these up for initial testing to make sure the job runs with no issues for a few days. You can also target an external server. We are running this on our local server, so we keep the defaults here. Click OK. 
The job was created. We can see it under the jobs folder now. Right click and select properties to get details on our job. We can view the history of this job, such as when it ran. We wait and check back later to see if the job ran when it was scheduled. Okay, now we go back and we can see records in the table. This is a good sign. Then we view history again and see the job ran at 8 p.m. We changed the schedule time so we didn't have to wait as long to test this. We see a green checkbox, which means the job ran successfully. The job took seven seconds to run. Okay, we set up our job and it ran with no errors. In the future, we will be creating more complicated SSIS projects and show different ways to schedule them. So please check back. Okay, that's all we have for today. Thank you for watching our video. As always, questions and comments are welcome. See you next time.